We are just moments from Connecticut's capital city, Silver Lanes in East Hartford, Connecticut. Time to resume the 2019 PWBA Tour season on CBS Sports Network. Five of the world's best bowlers set to compete for a tour title and big prize money. This is Dave Ryan alongside my tour star broadcast partners, Hall of Famer Kelly Kulik and major champion Stephanie Johnson. We have step ladder bowling here tonight. We start play with a five seed, two time Queens champ, Dinah Zabialaba against the fourth seed, Maria Jose Rodriguez of Columbia. The winner takes on our third seed, 2018 Tour Rookie of the Year, Jordan Richard. Climbing the ladder to the second seed, Birgit Purpler of Germany. Our top seed reigning player of the year, Shannon O'Keefe, looking for her third title of the season. It was just last week she teamed up with our Stephanie Johnson to win the Pan Am Games doubles gold medal in Lima, Peru. What a moment for these two great bowlers representing our country. Now Stephanie joined by Shannon with some very special hardware. Shannon, you may recognize the hardware that's hanging on my neck. We are fresh off our week in Peru. How do you think that catapulted you into being the number one seed on today's telecast? Uh, so much of it has to do with you. Um, you are my best friend, you're my sister, and working with you to win doubles gold was a dream come true. And uh, you gave me so much confidence that the information that I was giving you was correct, which gave me confidence in knowing what I was seeing and what I was doing. Well, what's it gonna take for you to take home number, title number 11 today? Well, 11 is your lucky number. Uh, and so for me, it's just focusing on controlling what I can control and execute. All right, Dave and Kelly, back to you. All right, Steph, Shannon, thanks so much. Future for sport oil pattern. Kelly Kulik, let's check out our conditions here tonight. Thanks, Dave. The ladies and I bowled on a 41-foot pattern, medium volume and medium scoring pace. You'll see right here, the rule of 31 says the break point's going to be about 41 feet. The straighter players were right around 10 or 12 on the track. The hook players started deeper inside, and as the lanes broke down, they continued to play left to right, but until hitting at the same break point about 40 feet. So look for all the hook players to keep going, chasing it left to right and hitting the pocket. Let's meet our first two bowlers with our PA announcer, Jason Thomas. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number four seed from Colombia, Maria Jose Rodriguez. <laughs> Time to bowl at East Hartford. So happy Kelly Kulik, the PWBA Tour is back <laughs> after the hiatus following the U.S. Open in Vegas. It was a well-deserved break, though. The ladies needed it. Maria, two-time major champ, gets us started with a high shot. And leads a three pin. Ladies had about 20 minutes of warm-up on the practice pair on the TV pair itself came over and Maria has decided to start the match. Hazard's pair, no worries. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number five seed from Latvia, Diana Zavialova. Now living in Austin, Texas. Tremendous talent. What ability. Big star on tour. Back on TV. Which is a major concern for the competition. 4-7 up. Not the way you want to go through that one three pocket. Yeah, good break there for Diane, of course. Both of the ladies are already starting deep inside between third and fourth arrow. Break points a little bit further inside 12. High pocket on the hit. Leaves the 4 7. Had some notes from our lane man and uh, ice oil. New lane service installed in back in May for the ladies' events specifically. But with a drop brush, they said there could be some unusual leaves when the ball hits the pocket. Big sigh relief for. Diana to get that spear. Last year we kicked off the season, these live telecasts back in Clearwater, Florida, where she won her title. Now back to these live events again, the, the last quarter or last third of our, our tour, and she made the show again. Which she brought up today <laughs> in our meeting with her. Very excited about the last leg of the tour. 
The chance to win again for Diana. That looks better. All 10 back. Sliding about 26, about 17, 18 at the arrows. Again, about 4, 10. So the length of the pattern is 41 feet. You're going to look for the ball to check off the spot about 44 feet, three or four feet past that break point area. The trick is, is finding a way to carry. That was the trick for me all weekend, getting more than nine. The 4C from Colombia. There's a 10 pin there. We also competed at the Pan Am Games. Third place, Cara, Clara Carrero of Columbia here, Team Columbia teammate, a long time close friend, took gold in the singles. Cross lane for the 10, and has that. Let's break her game down a bit, Kelly. Uh, Maria's game is great, it, it's very simple. I love her swing, it drops in nice and straight. A little hiccup step there. Hand stays behind the ball. Good power step here. Decent, de de decent distance apart, high back swing. Her head never moves. Great knee bend as the shoulder just drops in and an extended follow through. Beautiful physical game. Moves deeper on the left lane. Ooh, eight pin almost stood along with the 10 pin. 10 pin stands alone. Just a 10. That's a lot better. Starting about 27 back on the approach. Sliding now about 30. 19 at the arrows. It's a great with the thumb hole right there. Had the ball is right about board 10 there. Makes a spare. Oh, just misses at the end. So Maria leaves an open frame here. Frame number three for 47. Diana will step up in the third frame, looking for a double. Not what she wanted. These players are not finding the clean pocket here, Kelly, so far. We're just not hearing that explosion in that 1-3 pocket. Diana tries to take advantage, and... This pattern at times is very high scoring. The ladies had some great... Great game. Shannon shot 300 this week, some high 250, 260s. Diana with her five step approach. She really worked on her game in the off season from last year to this year. Look at that line right there, and look how her eyes are pointing directly at her target. Short power step, big, big knee bend, great spine tilt at the finish. If her hair doesn't move, it means her head didn't move. Solid physical game. Cross lane for the 10. After the U.S. Open in Vegas, Diana took some time to get her game back in gear. She made a lot of changes, she told us today, in the offseason. And she said too many changes hmm. to the point where she got in her own head. Went to the Bahamas over the week break after the U.S. Open. Relaxed, refocused, came back a new player. If that's a trick, I'm booking a ticket. Let's do it. <laughs> All 10 back. Maybe her best shot. The goal was to simplify her game before the season started. And she told us she was becoming someone she isn't. 26 with her feet, 16, 17 at the arrows. Absolutely right there. Yeah, the last year's season, I, I know I was heard through Facebook and a lot of her posts and her exercise regimen. She was working on a three-step approach in front of the ball return because the lanes broke down so severe. She really wanted to work on it. She uh, changed her push away again. But again, always solid at the foul line. Winner last year, Road to Richmond. The four seed, Maria Jose Rodriguez, all 10 back. Looking for some great PWBA gear? Visit the official online store of the PWBA at shoppwba.com. First match, step ladder bowling here from East Hartford tonight. Resuming our live coverage on CBS Sports Network of the PWBA Tour. Back on the road to Richmond. I <laughs> guess we are. We're in the passing lane. We're moving fast here. Challenging oil pattern for the players here. And all 10 back. 
Yeah, it was pretty easy to get to the pocket. It was just really a matter of carry. One of the keys just being patient. The ringing 10 pins, ringing 10 pins, the four pin moves. Really just finding the ball to shape off of it. You see with the white thumb, you can see it's kind of rotating in that way to make that directional change. It's really smooth. Watch it split the 8-9 right there. Comes back in the match only down by three with a double in the fourth and fifth frame. That needs help. By 13, that's a high shot. And somehow the three tenths stay up a macho house. Yeah. Baby split. Yeah, that was definitely physical. She was a little bit late in her timing. Watches her shoulder drops and her hands inside of it. Notice that her head moves to the left. Definitely missed so much inward on that one. Just a little bit late timing. Forced her to close down on the shot. Baby 310 stands. Tried for some help. Oh, not enough. Not an easy conversion. How's it? Much needed. She finished sixth of the U.S. Open in Vegas, just off the show. And really used that momentum along with her break in the Bahamas to get herself geared up for the last part of the tour season. Nice conversion. Yes. I mean, finishing the six, you didn't make the show. It was like almost winning it, as challenging those conditions were. Win probability, there are the numbers. Our new algorithm this year on our PWBA tour shows on CBS Sports Network. Love that stat. Oh, and the 4-9 stands. Yikes. That's what our lane man Nick Hoagland was talking about. Just uh, again, some tricky leaves. Look right there, you can see the yellow pin just stand up really, really high in the head pin. Two pin wraps around the four, takes out the seven, leaves the four nine standing. Possible to make. Just hits the right, left side of the four pin, slide it over into the nine pin. Three tens, one thing. How about the four nine? Kicks it across lane. And takes out number nine. That was sweet. Diana Zaviala just up by one in the sixth frame. We have five more frames to go in this first opening match. Back here at Hartford, Hall of Fame Silver Lanes. Tune in for the remainder match. City, East Hartford, Connecticut. Another great city is Richmond, Virginia. We can't wait for the final event of the year, KK, the last TV show of the season on September 18th, 8 o'clock live on CBS Sports Network. Let's work through the road to Richmond here. <laughs> yeah, Dave, you know, obviously Shannon just have a really big lead, 11,000 points over Danielle McEwen, but the X's do indicate the women with titles will automatically advance. Liz Johnson, past three-time player of the year, is still there. Going down the list, our co-host Stephanie Johnson on her side. In 12th position, right on the bubble right now is Shannon Plahowski, and look at the point difference between 15th and 16th place. Shana Ung also there, and as you can see, looking at the schedule, 16 players advance from the champions and point list. We will be in Richmond September 15th to 18th, and tune in September 18th live on CBS Sports Network at 8, 8, 8 p.m. Eastern to watch the best women bowlers in the world compete for that championship title. What a fantastic way to wrap up our tour season. On CBS Sports Network. Defending champ is right here. Maria Jose Rodriguez won it all last year in Richmond at the Old Dominion Complex. Steps up. Ten pin. Spot ten pin again. Yep. So tough. So tough to carry. You can, you can string a couple strikes together, go to the next pair, and just nine counted to death. And unfortunately, Maria's 26, 17, 18 at the arrows. It's rolling it really good, but you can see the ball is still mustering its way that way before it tries to change direction back to the pocket. It's just a hair too late, too light, and the ball deflects just not enough to swishy out the 10. No trouble that time on the 10 pins, Bear. Let's go, Stephanie. We'll hear from Stephanie soon. As Kelly mentioned, this is a newly installed lane surface that's only a couple months old, which is causing a lot of early friction and forcing both the ladies to open up their angles. During the break, after speaking with both reps, they're both throwing bowling balls that are a little cleaner through the fronts in order to have the right shape down the lane to go through the pins. 
Thanks so much, Stephanie, for that great information. And just getting some notes from Nick Hoagland, there was a little drop brush that dropped really quick after the first few feet. So it really forced the ladies to get left faster. Um, so it really made crucial adjustments with their equipment. Shinier, higher services, maybe 3,000 or 4,000. But as you said, they had to go further left inside, open up the lane even more to get the, the ball to the pocket. Great match here. Zavialba works on a spare. Seventh frame. Oh, lower seven. seven. Yeah, and even so, I mean, Shannon was the number one seed. She plays a little bit straighter, a little bit more ball speed than most of the other ladies. She was able to keep her angles in front of her more. The ladies with a higher rev rate, same amount of ball speed, a little bit, maybe, uh, maybe a bit softer, had to go more left to right. But you can see the head pin bounces off the sidewall there. The four pin does not take out the seven pin. And with Diana's dismay, you had to be upset too. That was a great shot, Diana. There's a seven, there's a spare. No problem. Tomorrow, four Eastern, and join CBS Sports. To improve on two or three. And like you said, if she tries too many different things that might interfere, overlap, kind of what tool in the toolbox do you reach for? Her versatility is great. She's got a lot of strengths there. But again, just a, a 10 pin stands alone. She's so good at what she does. This, the one thing about bowling in general, which I feel is if you have an A game, know your A game. Maybe have a B and possibly a C game, but really be good at one thing. Good advice. Yeah, I wish I took it years ago. <laughs> Cross lane, 10 pin. She's got it. Matches even, Dave. A couple of the changes she talked about had to do with squaring herself up at the approach, the push away as well. And she said everything she tried felt so unorthodox, she had to go back to being me. And that was really right around the U.S. Open in June when she put it all together, bowled so well in Vegas. And clearly, clearly that's continued here as we check the win probability is split right down the middle. How about that? Take it. Perfect oh, shot. Gosh. All 10 back in the pit for Maria Jose Rodriguez. Pan Am Games, we talked about Clara doing so well in Lima, Peru, PWBA Tour star. And Bronze. Maria. I have to highlight, Dave, did you see the date? It was Tuesday. Today's Saturday. All these women got on a plane, flew from Lima, either back home or directly here to Hartford, and now she's on the show. Same as Shannon O'Keefe making the show, just direct flying from Lima. Oof. It's Maybe tremendous that. effort. <laughs> try this again. Two for a dollar, that's what I always say. Maria said when she got back, because she'd been speaking Spanish, obviously, her native language, yeah. in Peru for so long, 10 straight days, she couldn't translate well. She, <laughs> the English wasn't coming out, and she was so exhausted from the jet lag, it was really hard to get going. And Josie Barnes doing a great job on Stats Force today. They had lunch together and some really good food. Apparently, things turn around. It's got to hurry back. Make it back. Oh. It does. So, Josie, whatever you said, it worked out pretty well. Got her in the right mind frame and she came back during qualifying got a lot better obviously has continued all the way to the show fantastic shot by maria whatever adjustment was still sliding about the same part of the lane 26 27 lay downs around 20. but as you can see just waiting in the window miss jordan richard last year's rookie of the year she will jump on this tv pair to face the winner of this opening match Strike for the big C. The only Z on the PWBA Tour. Yeah. Right Diana Zabialaba, a spectacular shot. In a great match. Look at the 5 7, how just oh, fall down now. So 236 max score for Maria, 216 max score for Diana. All three here will force Maria to double in the tenth. Or at least get the first strike. Left lane, tenth frame, seven pin hangs on. See the ball is just a pinch, lazy, just trying to get there. We call it slow response on the ladies tour. It's just a little slow trying to get its way back up the hill. 
he pushes to the right, continues to push to the right all the way this way. And again, it's just slow. It's that banana curve, but gets back with not enough energy for that flat seven. Former star at Weber International in Florida. And a longtime member of Team Latvia, 12 years for her native country. Great international influence on our show here today. Lots of pressure on Maria in the 10th. That's not the way to do it, unfortunately, for Diana. No, just some good pin count on the first ball from Maria Jose Rodriguez, and she will advance to face Jordan in, in match number two. When Diana gets just a little bit with later with the timing, can hear her heel stop in the foul line, just closes down the swing. It's typical of most athletes when do it. I do it. Many of the other bowlers do it, too. Put 193 for Diana. Six and pins to win here, Kelly. Yep. For Maria. Basically, just keep it on the lane for the victory. Got seven. And has a victory. So a win for Maria Jose Rodriguez in our first match. She will advance to take on Jordan Richard. Climbing the step ladder here in East Hartford tonight. Three, six, ten, no problem. This one's in the books, so we'll take a break. From East Hartford, Connecticut, Maria Jose Rodriguez, the four seed, knocks off Diana Zavialaba, the two-time major champ. Jordan Richard awaits. Hey, Jordan, thanks. That was awesome. A player rolls a 300 game during today's telecast will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowing.com. Visit GoBowing.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. Ready for match two. Richard Rodriguez head to head. Both these ladies will be in Las Vegas just a few weeks competing in the Women's World Championships. Oh, high hit on the head pin, three, six, seven, ten. Now during the break, Maria has to warm up on a non-used pair, non-lane. Jordan came over and had six or eight shots on the TV pair. She must now throw her spare ball, just hit to the right side of the three pin, slide it over to the seven. Chance. Cover here, oh. cross lane, and takes out the seven. How about that? Yeah, she liked that one too. Tremendous Ladies conversion. and gentlemen, please welcome our number three seed from Tecumseh, Michigan, Jordan Richard. <laughs> Two-time titleist as we see the amazing spare pickup conversion from Maria. Great start for Jordan. Swish the strike. Six. Show. She made four in a row on the backside of the tour leading up to the season concluding event in Richmond. Yeah, she, she was absolutely on fire. Especially loves the elite events in the elite field. You have 32 bowlers, drops down to 12, comes Saturday morning. Six more games to advance to the top five here for the telecast tonight. And she is third in ranking points. So coming off rookie of the year, has a vibe for player of the year with a win here tonight. Shut the front door. Eight. Stone eight. Barely stands. Right at Stone eight. Yeah, I, that's when your ball's doing the right thing. She's just a pinch righter than Maria. Look at the ball, just starts to set up. It's ready to hit that one three. Now, a fan told me this last week, don't know if it's true, but the head pin ricochets off the two pin and bounces off to into the five pin, and that's why the five pin goes past the eight, leaving the Stone eight. So thank you to that fan last week at the Lucy Doubles. There's the eight, there's the mark. 
Well, Jordan told us today that Emil Williams Jr. of Bowl TV had said to her, well, it's August. The live shows are coming up. It's your time, Jordan. Sure enough, she makes the telecast. There's another look at that stone eight. Yeah, you can see the head pin kind of rico ricocheted off to the two pin, into the five pin, and then it blew past the five pin, blew past the eight. Maria, all 10 back. And to finish up that story about email, best of luck to email and wife Shanice expecting a baby Tuesday. Tuesday. In Chicago. We wish you guys all the best welcoming in email Williams the third. Yeah, we thought any moment he was going to be hopping on a plane. Back <laughs> You're on standby to, uh, at this point. To make sure You're he ready was to go. the birth of his child. Yep. 12-193 win for Maria. Player of the year. Battle all determined by points on the PWBA tour. It is not a vote. Take it. Ooh, right 10. Six pin goes right around. Yeah, it's again, win here, obviously first has the highest point. So win here keeps advancing her in that point system to, to move up in the ranks. Danielle is second, Shannon's first. All right, so as we mentioned earlier, Kelly, we're not seeing the ball explode through that 1-3 pocket. What's happening? Yeah, well, again, on that graph you see, picture that blue graph that you saw, on that, a lighter shade of blue. So where there's less volume in the front, forces the ladies left, and then it hits the slick oil down the lane. So it's kind of two opposing forces. One wants early hook, one wants to extend it even longer. So the ball depletes energy faster, doesn't have quite that explosion you're talking about, Dave. To our producer, see that. So imagine this shade right here, a lighter shade of blue instead of the dark shade of blue. It's just lighter in the front and the ball wants to start hooking immediately. Then it hits the oil and kind of wants to push even further. So again, two opposing forces working against each other. That looked pretty good. So yeah. how do you best combat that? Well, Jordan Richard has a slight advantage here, I think, in this match, just because of her firmer ball speed. She doesn't have to open up the lane nearly as much, and she keeps her angles in front of her. So ball speed is a slight advantage right now in this match. You gotta find a ball that's gonna shape through the pocket. Maybe Maria might make a ball change something a little bit cleaner, or go further inside, soften up her ball speed a little bit and get around it some more to create more entry angle into the pocket. Left lane go up by 10. She liked it. Yeah. And for good reason. Jordan told us that when she failed to make the cut this year in Fountain Valley, first time in her young career, she had not made the cut. It really opened her eyes to have to make some changes leading up to the U.S. Open and the hiatus for the last part of the swings. I don't think there ever comes a time in, in a bowler's uh, mm -hmm. profession that you can ever kind of take a breath. And I mean, Josie, myself, Stephanie, everyone we're always continuing to work on our game to improve it. Flat hand again there. That one was really leaked wide, but a little help from the friction to the right got it back. Maria's running into a little bit of trouble here. Jordan's got a great look. She's either going to have to make a ball change or an angle change as well. Down at the footwork there near the foul line. That uh, takes care of the 10 pin. Follow the PWBA on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and BowlTV.com to keep up with the greatest women bowlers in the world. Get the latest video highlights and news each week to follow your favorites. Yeah, if you guys don't have a subscription to BowlTV.com, go it. out and get it. Get it. Watching live bowling all the time. PWA coming at you on your home computer, your home screen, even on your tablet or your phone. Good shot. Oh, and there's those tricky leaves I was talking about earlier. We thought we might see this, Kel. Yep. A couple times, these very difficult splits. 4-10 here. Yeah, look, she's moved further left. See the ball stand up even harder off the end of the pattern, so as it dove in, high on the head pin there. Six pin falls flat in front of the 10. Pocket 4-10 stands. Tough conversion, not this time. And the 10 is up. It's an open frame. Back to Steph. Jordan has one of the higher rep rates on tour, and as you can tell, she's playing the lanes a lot straighter than Maria. She's trying to use that friction to her advantage. Uh, she's also using a medium symmetrical bowling ball to hopefully get through that oil and shape the lane and go through the pins correctly.
It's another good shot. It's a drop 34 yeah. step. And has another. Has the turkey in frames three through five to take a big lead. Yeah, she's sliding further right. 16, 17 at the arrows. Ball just stands up really. Split. Faces our bowlers here today. Yeah, getting comfortable and everything through the three or four strikes in a row. Kind of fans it off to the right. She leaked it way further right that time. Break point was about 10. She had about 7 8 on that one. It's not the 7 10, but it's a 2 10. That's tough. It is makeable, though. Slide the two over. Can she convert? <laughs> Somehow misses the 10 pin. And I don't know how. Everything but knock it over. Halfway point of match two. Things switch with momentum a few times. Great conclusion of our second match is on the way from East Hartford. Side of match, three seed Jordan Richard, the four seed Maria Jose Rodriguez of Columbia. Halfway home with that one there. Waiting to see who will win this one and face the two seed Birgit Purpler of Germany, who's joined now by Steph. Birgit, you were not originally part of the elite field going into this event, which meant you had to bowl the pre-tournament qualifier. How do you feel that may have helped you in making today's telecast? Um, I think it helped because I led that event, so it gave me some confidence to go into yesterday. Um, and I had a pretty good look, so it really built up my confidence, I think. All right, best of luck to you. you. Stephanie, thank you. It's a common word I'm hearing amongst players, they have confidence. The better you bowl, the more your confidence explodes and gains even more. When you have confidence, your swing gets nice and loose, you hit your target, and you bowl your A game, you bowl your best. Birgit looks for a second career title. Maria steps up. Four, seven. Yeah, move a little bit left on that shot. Gets your hand around it a little bit more. Ball picks up more in the mid lane. Unfortunately, the four, seven leave. It's not over, but she does have to string some strikes if she wants to give herself an opportunity to advance. That's 4 7, no problem there. You're right. Time is now. She's going to make a run at Jordan Richard. Tonight at 10 Eastern, CBS Sports Network, live from Las Vegas for the World Team Tennis Finals. Don't miss as New York battles Springfield for this year's title on the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. New York Empire. Knocked off top seed in Philadelphia. Springfield Lasers are the defending champs of World Team Tennis. Indoors, outdoors. Up the hill. Uh. Ten pin, I'm going to say indoors. <laughs> I mean, in Vegas now. It we is were there a couple Vegas. weeks ago for the PBA Tour Finals, man. It was 115 degrees. I say it was 110. Oh, it was a lot. Oh, come on. You're only an athlete if you play outside. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm sure it'll be air conditioned and very, very comfortable for the spectators and the athletes. Definitely. 10 pin, got it. We're looking to bounce back. Back is Jordan Richard, seventh frame. We really enjoyed her time at the Pan Am Games. She's been to Peru four times, she told us. Young star, reigning rookie of the year. Trying to get back to that winning form. Won this year in Lincoln. Member of Team USA. It's got to hurry. Oh, it does. Light hit and two stands. Yeah, and just off there, Jordan's got a great physical game, but occasionally her feet just get a little fast. When your feet get ahead of your swing, it has a tendency to pull down a little bit and kind of fan the ball out to the right. Again, look how her torso right there. She's got a lot of power. Eyes looking forward, left arm out in front. I know I'm drawing a lot of lines, but it's crucial that she's got a, such a big knee bend. But again, the footwork just got a pinch faster than the swing, fans it out to the right, leaks it out for the two pin. A smile from Jordan. Hooks out the two pin. That's a good sign. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Moving that ball, wasn't she? Straighter is greater, but everyone has their own technique. Excited for the remaining shows on CBS Sports Network. We'll talk a lot about that. Louisville is next week at 5 Eastern. Orlando at 4 Eastern, so be sure you mark down the different start times. The regional showdown as well will air on August 24th at 5 Eastern.
Players Championship, Tour Championship, still to come. That's a good shot. Uh, excuse me? Okay, Dave, I, I gotta say this is a big question mark right here. This to me, I thought was perfect off her hand. A little firmer than the ball speed. The ball just deflects away from the five pin. Seen some very bizarre leaves here today. You do not often see the four five. I, I, I'm dumbfounded right now. I really have a question mark going through my mind. I did. I saw that. I think Liz left one this week, but it's almost like the ball picked up speed. And a chop and an open frame. Back to Stephanie. Yeah, so Maria's ball is getting behind the head pin just a smidge. So they're going to be switching to a lower RG ball that will get started a little sooner and hopefully go through the pins the right way. Let's see what this ball does. She gets forced further left, so bigger ball, meaning stronger core, maybe a stronger cover. Ball pick up in the mid lane, kind of roll more forward into the pocket. Crunch time, right lane. Works on a spare. Bang it, Needs bang it. it. Gets it. Good ball change. It was indeed. Standing 23-24, sliding about 28, 18 at the arrows. Not as quite as steep of angle, so she's going more direct towards the pocket. Watch the ball, some hole just shape up, roll very forward, and yeah, ball split the 8-9. Good call by Maria and her ball rep. Ninth frame, comes in high, and a very tough lead again. A lot up, yeah, Three, it's six, nine, ten. I mean, Jordan's having trouble in the left lane. She's 210 and then she's 4-5. Okay. But Maria's actually seen the ball hook even sooner. You can see in the highlight, Birgit Purplers qualified second. She's gonna face the winner of match number two. Three, six, nine, ten. Takes care of it. That's a really good spare for Maria. Keep this match very interesting. Yeah, just down by eight. Going in the ninth frame. We have gone back and forth so many times, Kelly, where one bowler gains the momentum and the other just takes it right back. Yeah, I mean, the scores this week, you had girls or ladies shooting at 230, 240, then there'd be that 180 game that sinks in there because of the nine counts. Be good, be good. You heard her, be good. It was. Much better shot stays underneath it, shoulder drops in. Ball hits powerfully. It's that one three pocket. Win probability, there are the numbers. Right now nearly 58% for Jordan. Thought it was interesting, she told us today, Kelly, that and we saw talked a lot about her Rookie of the Year award from last year. It was tough because she's a very private person mm. and a lot of social media came her way and she doesn't like to talk that much about herself. <laughs> Likes to do the talking on the lanes with shots like that. And a big time strike again for Jordan Richard. Great shot. How she left the 4 or 5 last time, I do not know, but the ball actually stands up and rolls heavily forward into the pocket to, to knock down all 10. Seven pins to win. And advance up the ladder to take on Birgit Perpler from Germany. Wait, get seven. She, yeah, she gets the ball just going away from the pocket a little bit. It, it never reads, it never slows down. It's just like it picks up even more and more speed. She's gonna take a look at something here on 10th frame. See if the ball shapes up a bit differently. I would, I would say my suggestion is go to a stronger ball and just go a little bit left. That would be my suggestion. Leaves the eight. But it is enough. Jordan Richard has knocked off the four seed, Maria Jose Rodriguez from Colombia, and she will climb the ladder. Purpler is next here at East Hartford. 
These bowlers buying, buying for a PWBA Tour title. And big prize money as well. And he's Tarper, ready to resume bowling shortly after two matches. Jordan Richard has climbed the ladder. The number two seed, Birgit Puppler of Germany, awaits the winner. Welcome back to our PWBA Tour coverage on CBS Sports Network. Dave Ryan Kelly Kulik, my Hall of Fame analyst, joined as well by Stephanie Johnson, major champion, throughout our broadcast here today in New England. And Kelly, we talk about the top two seeds in our event here. Shannon O'Keefe having another brilliant season, looking for a second straight Player of the Year award. She's been sort of in one camp, and Birgit Puppler is trying to rebuild herself at this point and get back on track. Yeah, Dave, Shannon just exploded out of the gate this season again, extending wow. her lead with Player of the Year as well. She, her mental game has just been phenomenal. You see her warming up and how strength that she has with not only her physical endurance, but her mental game as well. Now we move on to Birgit, a player who has got to try to get back on the winning track. The question is, how does she do that? As she told us today, some back problems have really bothered her. Yeah, Dave, after the break, she took some time off, uh, wanted to rest up her back and really kind of find her physical strength again. So Birgit took that time to relax. She also got engaged, but she bowled the TQR, the tournament qualifying round, had a lot of confidence going today. She bowled on this side of the house, so she has some information and knowledge, and she's going to be a force to contend with going into this match today. That's great news, right? Congratulations yeah. to Birgit with our question as she gets set to take on Jordan Richard in our next match here in East Hartford, Connecticut. She'll try to celebrate that big news with a big win over the reigning Rookie of the Year on the PWBA Tour. More coming up. <laughs> Include Aaron McCarthy last year. <laughs> Look at that, Michelle Feldman, Michelle Feldman, Michelle Feldman. So I think Michelle she likes dominance. it. The eastern or central part of the United States, 2002, 2098, likes the even numbers for sure. She will be, by, by far, you know, be eligible for the PWA Hall of Fame as well. <laughs> match number three, Dave, getting underway. Jordan Richard will start the match. Birgit Purpler will finish first, so any pressure will be put on Jordan. Just coming off a 190 game last game. 199 to 182. Had to grind out the victory over Maria Jose Rodriguez. Jordan gets us started with a high shot and a baby split. 3 10. A little left to target. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number two seed from Germany, Birgit Puppler. <laughs> Sie kommt aus Rendsburg, Deutschland. Pretzel, please. <laughs> I'm going to get a little more German, <laughs> just, just so you know. It's always fun for me when Birgit makes the show. Pretzel and some Spetzel. It's a good combo. There's a four pin. Lots of carbs. High four pin for Birgit. Yeah, 30 games plus she's bowled this week now. Eight games in the TQR or pre-PTQ, pre-tournament qualifier. Another 16 on Friday. Six more this morning, so she's ready up to 30. This is game number 31 for, for Birgit. The back problem she has faced, we talked about a moment ago, nearly knocked her out for the entire season. In Takes care of the spare. A lot of pain after the U.S. Open in Las Vegas. Went to see a specialist in Germany and had an MRI. Was told it's nothing too serious, nothing structural. Surgery is non imminent. Correct. It's a rest issue. and physical therapy issue, ice and stretching. And she was pretty relieved yeah. <laughs> to know she'd come back to the States and finish out the tour. Anytime surgery is not involved or just maybe a little PT to help along the way, but the rest definitely helped her. Great shot by Birgit. Left lane hooking a little bit earlier, starting to migrate inward. 11 pin lead just in the first two frames. Sliding 27, 17 at the arrows. You can see those beautiful color labels on the bowling ball as they start to migrate left. Her game is definitely smoothed out in recent, recent months. So with her tour rep, she really found the answer at the end of her match with Maria now struggling in this one. The open frame, and there's a 10 pin. 
on a better looking shot. Jordan is definitely executing. She's only fanned two to the right. You can see Tyler Lee, but watch the ball deflects a little bit towards the nine pin. It's just not getting into that heavy, heavy roll. I don't know, I'm thinking, me personally, I would just maybe ball up more, go to a bigger ball. Back to staff here. Hey, Steph Kelly here. Just wondering if, uh, you know, Jordan, she's getting a lot of push down lane. Is it possible to ball up here, go to something a little bit stronger, go a little bit more left to right? Yeah, you know, after speaking with the ball reps, they wanted to, her to start with the ball she ended her match against Maria with, but I would not be surprised if she puts a bigger ball in her hand that micro the pins and carry those flat tens she's leaving. Left lane here, guys, and all 10 back. That looks a lot better. Yeah, still sticking that same ball. When we say bigger ball, we mean stronger cover, maybe stronger core, bigger, num lower numbers. 248 RG levels. The lower the number, the earlier it's going to slow down. Already staked an 11 pin lead. Chance to make it 21 here, third frame. Bear gets back on TV. Ooh, almost leaves the 4-9. Just a 4, could have been a lot worse. Starting to see a lot of breakdown now in match number 3. Sliding 26, 27, still 17, 18 of the hours. You can see right there, the ball all of a sudden really started to change direction and pick up quicker. Nice red and blue colors in the ball. And you see that neon green label roll forward. So yeah, sharp angle into the pocket. Has to make, I'd probably say, at least a 2-1, maybe even a 3-1. Beyonce Toby there in the back, blue shirt, right? Yeah, got engaged to the US Open. What good news pretty that cool. was. Pretty cool. All right, ready? Here we go. Herzlichen Glückwunsch for the Hochzeit. Sie ist die beste Nachrichtung der Welt, which is congratulations on your wedding to be. It's great news. How's that? Now, can you do it in Finnish? <laughs> Absolutely not. Left play, all 10 back. That's the end of my German for now. You're great at it, Dave. 11 pin lead for Birgit. Bolt TV delivers my live multi channel coverage of the PWBA Tour, Team USA, and USBC Collegiate and Youth Tournaments. Plus, watch hours of new instructional video, classic bowl and telecast, and behind the scenes content each month. Visit bowl. TV.com to subscribe today. Bowen lives here. 610. Yeah, last time the light trying to square up to that pocket. Keep chasing it left. 610 spare. When you start to have like I call it the red flag, Dave. You get you get it to the right, it doesn't come back. If you keep it in front of you, hooks too much, that's when you have to make a ball change, an angle change, or most likely both. I do agree with you, Kelly, based on what we're seeing with Jordan's reaction. It looks like she's about to go talk with her ball reps. She's switching balls right now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and see if that's the right call. Thanks, Steph. Looks to me like it is. If you miss right, doesn't come back. If you miss in, it hooks too soon. Has to be a change. Ball reps watch closely. Big strategic move. Late messenger? Maybe, yes! Across the deck just in time. And there's a look to the ball reps. And a sigh of relief as well. That scout took a long time to find its mark and just enough to nudge the 10 over into the channel. How about that? Here, 
George heading to her ball rep. Back to beer again. No four pin that time, Dave. Catches the double in the fifth frame, up 21 pins halfway through match number three. Wow, win probability for Birgit, 82%. How about that? Over 18%. 82 yeah. plus percent. A member of Team Germany since 2010, a five-time German national champ. Trying to bring that over across the Atlantic and have more success here. Oh, three-bagger catches the turkey. Shots like that, Kelly, she just might. She's got a big lead, halfway yeah, home. Dave. 30 games are ready this week. She has two more games to win to be crowned a champion again. Commanding lead for Birgit with five frames left to go. Who's going to win? Birgit Fuppler at Turkey frames four through six and a 31 pin lead as she tries to take down Jordan Richard and advance to take on Shannon O'Keefe, our top seed, who's now joined by Stephanie Johnson. Shannon, you're no stranger to the number one seed. You've watched a couple matches before you. You've been able to practice a little bit. What's going to be your game plan when you hit that TV pair? Um, we're just going to take it one shot at a time out there in practice. I get six shots. The girls migrated left really, really quick. And I had a little something to the right. So six shots, and we'll see. Back to you, Dave. All right, Steph. All right, Shannon. So Kelly, do you agree with that approach, having seen the other bowlers struggle a lot today? Well, Shannon was able to stay a little bit further right of most of the other women throughout the weekend, for sure. I still gonna see, she's going to see some early friction, but her tilt and her rotation might allow for the ball just to push. And again, she's got firm ball speed, so she might find something that no one else has. Time is now for Jordan Richard, and all tan back. Yeah, so far that ball change, change is definitely panning out for her. Catches the double, cuts the lead down to only 21. Playing now, seventh frame, looks for the turkey. A chance to reduce this lead. For beer get to 11 pins. Left lane, right lane breakdown. Four for nine in the left lane, five for eight in them. No more than 50%, almost. Big shot. Got a hurry. Star from Michigan. Swishes, and I mean swishes, the bucket. Yeah, Stephanie said earlier, the ball just getting up behind the head pin. You can see just right, trying to get there. Two, four, five, eight, falls late. Crumbles it up, head pin off the wall back there, takes out the eight pin. We got ourselves a match here. 11 pin difference for now. Looking for four in a row for Birgit. Four bagger, 21 pin lead. Birgit, yes. Sliding 28, 18 at the arrows. You can see the ball. That's when the ladies, when they start to migrate left, their angles don't get, they're still steep, but then almost the ball's facing up in front of the 1-3 pocket. That's when carry became challenging. Wow, 10 years team member of Germany. She will also be in Las Vegas, bowling for Germany in Las Vegas in just a few weeks. There's the stat, pack breakdown. Whoa, nine pin thought about standing, but it knocks did, down. Didn't it did, Little late nudge on the nine. And it goes down for another strike. Kind of interesting, she raised up a little bit at the end there, kind of tilted her body, put her head to the left. Her ball speed able to push the ball down the lane, flush the pocket. Just enough, five bagger. And we'll get right back at 31 pins. So each bowler really turning it on here. Oh, that needs help. Crossing over. Oh, five pins. Nearly a Brooklyn strike. Here's a five. Tough time so late in the match. Yeah, quick again, feet get a little bit fast. Balls a little bit late in the swing. You can see her just shut down in front, hips and the torso kind of squares up a little bit more, misses in front of her. Yeah. 
the conversion five pin. Still at a 220 pace for Jordan. Down 32 with two frames left to go. That is a big hill to climb, Kelly. It is. Sharon O'Keefe awaits the winner. Look for the third title of 2019. Points leader for player of the year again. The win probability looking pretty good for Birgit. Needs help. Almost, Almost gets it. Leaves the eight pin. And the deficit balloons for Jordan. Yeah, the more we bowled uh, over the weekend or yesterday, and the more friction was built in. Jordan definitely excelled to the top. I mean, she was going back and forth with Shannon, leading it back and forth. Now with only five women on the pair, the heat, the oil, a little tricky with ball reaction. Well, Jordan told us today how happy she was to get back on TV. They're looking for a great finish to the last part of the 2019 tour. So making the show, getting a win, that's good. It's a good step. Yeah, if Birgit strikes here, she's just going to shut her out for sure. Really in a commanding lead. It's got to push. Oh. Three, four, six, seven. Still on a 2 0 pace. Another unusual lead. Yeah. We've seen a few of these today. It is. I mean, just again, you get comfortable. You know you're hitting the pocket, and you just get a little grabby, or you try to accelerate a touch at the bottom of the swing. Ball goes high. Lots of cover. Three, four, six, seven. Split. Slide it. Yes! Converts. <laughs> Fabulous shot. Das is ausgezeichnet, which is yeah. excellent in German. Yeah. What a shot. That guarantees her into the championship match right now. Just needs six pins to officially wrap it up. She'll get 10, she'll get a win. <laughs> and Shannon O'Keefe awaits. So Birgit Puppler, who was on shore with a, what she called a very severe back injury, would end her season. Was able to work through that back at home in Germany. In the hiatus after the US Open in Vegas in June. And here she is now on the verge of a title. She'll play in the championship match against Shannon O'Keefe, our top seed. To the run ends for Jordan Richard, the reigning rookie of the year. Looking for a second title of 2019. That will not happen here at East Hartford for Jordan today. Birgit advances, advances to take on Shannon O'Keefe in what should be a tremendous match between the top two seeds. It's the PWBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. All right, Kelly, there's a reason our top two seeds are where they are entering this TV show today as Birgit Puffler takes care of Jordan Richard, 236, 207. They're the best two in this elite field. And now we're ready to watch Puffler take on Shannon O'Keefe, who's had yet another tremendous season. Yeah, Dave, her fourth telecast of the year already has two titles under her belt for this season, looking for her third and, again, her second consecutive player of the year run. She has just clearly dominated this season, especially in Tucson, where she led the field by over 200 pins. Four statistical categories with average points, pin total pins, and this week, I was next to her. She rolled the only 300 game of this week's event. Nowhere near 300 on our telecast here today. And coming off the gold medal with our Stephanie Johnson at the Pan Am Games doubles event this year. It's a dream matchup. Top seed against the number two seed coming up next. Reigning player of the year. Thanks, and women's coach at McKendry. Team USA gold medalist. Janet O'Keefe, top seed, ready to go against our two seed, Birgit Pepler, the star from Germany. Head to head, only one Kelly can win this will be fun. 
Yeah, Dave, I, I mean, we're sitting here talking in the booth during the commercial break, and it's like, who's it going to go to? Is it Shannon, who's just been on a tear, her confidence is soaring, or is it going to be Birgit just coming off the last match, knowing what the lanes are playing like, nothing to lose, out of the PTQ, just trying to extend her lead, a good feeling back. It's, it's, I think it, it has to come down to the 10th frame. Good scores to be seen. That's what I'm going to say. Convincing win over Jordan Richard in our third match. Birgit's championship match begins with a high shot and a baby split. Yeah, just off commercial break, just a little bit. Pinched it left, a little bit slower the ball speed. Calm the nerves, baby's 310. You can see slides really hand, shoulder really came down and closed in front of her. Again, when the head goes left, the shoulder goes with it, closes down the angle, miss inward. Open frame. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number one seed from Shiloh, Illinois, Shannon O'Keefe. Sometimes get a little lucky. And yeah. Ross is over on the Brooklyn side as she begins her quest for an 11th career title. Any player rolls a 300 game during today's telecast will receive a $10,000 bonus. Courtesy of GoBoeing.com. Visit GoBoeing.com to find local Boeing centers. Get tips from the pros and for all on the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. Yeah, Shannon said six shots to the right. See what you had. That shot right there tells her she needs to go left. She liked that for good reason. For sure. Anytime you see Birgit perform on TV, or any time, for that matter, always composed. True pro. Seven pin late. Birgit, part of the BPAA moment of the match with this very tough spare conversion, Kelly. Yeah, Dave, ninth frame gets up. Leaves the three, four, six, seven. Look at this routine spare. Oh, yeah, no problem, right? Yep. Clips off the four as the three pin drives into the seven pin. By far the moment of the match. Advances her now. It's not the big four, but that's a pretty tough shot. Oh, the Nixon. <laughs> Left lane, all 10 back. Finds the groove in the one three pocket, crunches him into the pit for a big strike. This is what happened all week long. Legs just, lanes just progressively got hooked more and more in the front, in the mid lane. Ladies had to chase it further left, getting into that fourth arrow area. This is where it's going to be all about carry. First time in Peru for Shannon. Trip this year to the Pan Am Games. She's always wanted to compete in that event. Dreamed of being Olympian as a kid. Shot. Right there goes Brooklyn last time on that lane. Sliding about 30, 32 through about 20. Center arrow. Right there. Directly overboard 20. See the ball still pushing, hydroplaning far to the right, never picking up into that hook and roll phase. Light two pin. Takes care of the mark. Part of the Bowl TV highlight of the week, Kelly, with the only 300 game that we've seen so far here in East Hartford. 
Tough conditions, as you know, with a great run, by the way, for you. Yeah, they were at lane 11 and 12. I was right next to our 9 and 10 and watched her pack all of them in. Great shots. Seventh frame, you see the green X. The 10-pin was late to fall with a messenger along the way. And her 12th shot was executed, like she said, perfectly. The main focus, one shot at a time in execution. The only 300 of the week. Coming off of games of 183 and 235. Three around one. Okay. Got her 300. There's a strike. Perfect spot. One three pocket. Those pins have no chance. And she's got a 10 pin lead. What? So you're questioning your move style. She threw it good with that light two pin lead. Ball rep said go make a one and one move to the right. One board with your feet, one board with your eyes at your target. Wants the ball to slow down sooner, pick up. Change direction. Just to tie things up in the fourth. And a turkey for Birgit. Looks good. It is good. Three bagger. All square. Birgit's game, 5-3 approach. Look, she gets it late on that step. Watch her shoulder. Shoulder's here, but then her shoulder's going to kind of Ferris wheel down as it drops in. Just like that. Hand stays behind it really long time. And she gets to project the ball so easily left to right or inside to out. One of the big keys is watching the shoulder drop in so the hand can stay behind it and through the target. Stubber 10 pin still stands. Big one of three international players who qualified for the PTQ. Rosiola Strepper and Jazriel Tan, Colombia and Singapore, respectively. And Kelly, I know it was a tough road for you. A lot of bowling to get to qualifying, and it came so close. Great run for you. Oh, I did. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, just about 40 or 50 outside the show, finished six. It was a great week for me. Keep on swinging, I know you will. <laughs> I'm not done yet. Saying in Rocky, I didn't hear no bell yet. <laughs> One pin match. Chance to make it 11 here in the fifth frame. Make that one and one move right. We need advice of her reps. Okay. Yeah. Four pin. Shots. Yeah, really good shot. I mean, the first one was Brooklyn. Just ran away with it. Last one she thought she threw it really good. Got through it extensively. And that one right on line with that one and one adjustment. You can see 19, 20. Hits her target exactly. Ball picks up just so quick off that back portion of the lane in the back ends. It's a sharp move. Really, really sharp move. That's why the four pin stood. There's the four, and there is the mark. Shannon's game is also unique. She's four-step approach, drops the ball in second step. She has a long third step right here, but then she has the dualness of her both feet powering up there. Left arm is out to the side, and what Shannon is known for, infamously for, is her follow-through. Almost hits herself in the back every single time. That's where she generates her power. Tour leading, fourth show of the year. Shannon O'Kee avoids the double wood, has the two. Yeah, two pin. Okay, kind of the same instance, Dave, what Jordan Richard was facing in the match previous. She moves off it when it hooks, then it doesn't hook enough. It can't go back to the right. It's not going to get there. You can see the ball. It still wants to go that way towards the ten pin. It's never trying to pick up and change direction. And when it does, uh-uh, it's out of gas. Too late, too, le too less energy. It's not enough. Leaves the two pin. Hate to say it, but a risk has to come up. I think a ball change is in order. It will be interesting to see which bowler makes which change here this late in the championship match. It's all about strategy. 
and execution because only one baller Kelly can win it. Who's it going to be? Capital City, one of its nicknames, New England's rising star. And a couple star bowlers on the lanes here today, head to head, Pumpler and O'Keefe. Let's go back to Stephanie. Yet yeah, during the break, I did speak with both of the ball reps. The girls are playing the lanes very similarly with a little bit of surface on a medium symmetrical ball to get the lanes, uh, the ball to pick up a little earlier and restore some energy in the back. But Kelly, I would not be surprised if we do see a ball change here pretty quickly. Yeah, Steph, looking into my uh, little silver ball here, I'm thinking just like Shannon's reaction, Brooklyn, light two pin, four pin, I think a ball change has to be inevitable for her to start striking more. All right, guys, love the insight, and here we go. Last half of the last match. Birgit works on a spare. Had a really good shot, only the 10 stands. We saw so many of those this week, Dave. So many 10 pins, a couple four pins. That was the most common lead of all the women. Again, the further left they go, the longer the ball has to take to get back. It's on the lane a lot longer. Has to drive through the pocket. Watch the six pin just casually wrap itself around the 10. When you move left, you have to get a little bit more axis rotation so the ball gets back and drives into that one three. Takes care of the single pin spare conversion. No worries there. Just a one pin match. Wow. Strikes only four of eight, 50% on the right lane. That's where Birgit is going to finish in the 10th. And as a player, you, you say you want to strike. So you almost try to make it happen sometimes. And when you try to make something happen, it's usually a, a really nasty leave. Oh, there's a little love tap from the six pin. A tap on the 10 takes care of business. It's almost like a billiard table. Picture the gutter as like board 10, 11. The ladies are just kind of rolling or throwing the ball to that gutter and it just tips up off of it to get back to the pocket. The top seed, seventh frame is high. It's a baby split. Yeah, 310. Really, prediction here, I, I have to say, I, that ball change is inevitable. You keep chasing it left with a stronger surface bowling ball. She gets around it with her hand. The ball is right on target. I mean, she's throwing it phenomenally well, which is great. But because her hand gets around it even more, it checks so much earlier and goes through the head pin for the one three of the baby split. Big shot, big conversion for OP. Shannon's an excellent spare shooter. Really, really consistent, high 90 percentage on the lanes when it comes to spares. Real, your steps, let's go. Nineteen at the hours, perfectly made. Go. Yep. Nickname at the Hines, the 5'7". I love it, I love it. Makes sense because I feel like Which I slides, just, like, gets around it. Oh, ball is just slow, slow. First step. Okay. This is a key frame for Birgit. The reason being, like you said, Dave, she's going to finish on this lane. This whole frame, frame number eight, sets it up right for her right now. Go up by 11 pins. Does it wiggle? Oh, oh eight pin eight stands. Pin did everything but go down there, Kelly. I can't believe it didn't tumble. Yeah, almost trying to come in a little bit lighter, kind of catch the swishy strike. Really accelerates at the bottom of the swing. You can see the ball really pushes, stands up into roll early. Oh, it tried, but it failed. 
On port and spare, got that, no worries, again. Max scores. Erica told us today in the interview after qualifying was complete about her spare. Percentage this week were very good. It's not been the case all season for her. No, and it could have been from the back the injury, just being sore and stiff. Could be have sleepless night. So many factors that play into a an athlete's production of their performance. Foundation frame. 6'10", standing for Birgit. Muffling does have earlier hook. 6'10", needs to stay clean. So, camera cue. Got it. Both ladies have struggled on this right lane. Up by one to the night. We're go up by 11. Yes! You bet! Wow, 479, the plates have fallen on that lane. Big strike, 60 feet to success for O'Keefe when she needed it most. Yeah, she talked about her footwork from the last frame. Ball drives a bit harder there, 479. Whoa, late to fall there. That's what she needs. First, the strike. Be right. Yes! There it is! Shannon O'Keefe inching closer to her 11th career tour title. Shannon time. Needs five pins, gets nine pins, and gets a win here in East Hartford, Connecticut tonight. Janet O'Keefe has done it again. Lucky title number 11. As she talked about with Stephanie Johnson, that's Steph's lucky number. <laughs> it was time. For this to happen, with Stephanie on the air as our reporter today, Shannon O'Keefe. 11 <laughs> career titles. Come give me some love. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I'm glad you guys are here. At her third of the season perfect. to lead the PWBA Tour. Celebrates with husband Brian. A winner in East Hartford tonight. Shannon O'Keefe has won her 11th career PWBA Tour title with a win today, 225-203 over Germany's Birgit Kerpler. And now Kelly joined by Jim Welch, the National Tournament Director of Bolero for the trophy presentation. Guys. Your 2019 Hartford, Connecticut champion, Shannon O'Keefe, here to present the trophy, the National Tournament Director of Bolero, Jim Welch. Hi, uh, Shannon. On behalf of Bolero Corp and all the great fans here in New England, we'd like to present you with this token of your achievement. Congratulations. Congratulations, Shannon.
Real quick question. The first two, three years on tour, you bowled good, but these last two years, you have dominated. What has been the key for you to be such a dominating force here on tour? You know, the thing is that all these ladies work really, really hard, and I see it all over their social media, and so I just don't want anybody to outwork me, and so I've just worked my tail off, and I finally believe in myself enough that I know I can do it, so. Well, you've worked it off for sure. Congratulations, your 2019 Hartford, Connecticut champion. Congratulations. Kelly, thanks. Be sure to join us next Saturday, 5 Eastern, for the championship round.